It's likely you are trying to solve a problem that the teacher you're working with doesn't actually have. One of the most common questions we get asked here at Make Math Moments when we work with schools, school districts, district coordinators is, is how do we help teachers adopt new teaching strategies? How do we create buy-in? And, you know, I think it, it comes down to thinking about what problems are teachers experiencing and, and what solutions are you trying to provide? And, and oftentimes there's a mismatch there. Um, and I want to address that mismatch here in this particular uh, video. And I want to share this, this idea that uh, has been floating around my mind and, and, and around the stages of awareness. The stages of awareness are when you have to think about that every teacher goes through stages of awareness when they have problems and seeking the solutions to those problems. When we're trying to help teachers adopt new strategies, we're actually trying to provide implementation on a problem, you know, that that's at maybe in the classroom. So we just got off the call from one of our district coordinators and one of their objectives this year is discourse in the classroom, more discourse as a, as a general theme, as a general zone to strengthen in the classrooms across the district and their math, math programs from K to 12. And when you think about trying to support discourse in the classroom, we're actually trying to say, well, these are the routines. These are the structures. These are the ideas. These are the lessons. This is the way you want to design your lesson. Like you're, you're, you're giving teachers structural routines and pedagogical moves to solve a problem. And that problem you're trying to identify is that there needs to be more discourse in the classroom. Teach kids, kids are going to learn their mathematics at a deeper level. If they are sharing their ideas, communicating their ideas, you're going to learn more about what they are, where they are in their, on their learning journey, which is assessment for you as a teacher so that you can provide the the next steps for them, which is really important components of why discourse is important. There's no, there's no doubt about it that that's a valid and a, and a, and a worthwhile zone or or area to strengthen across, say, a mathematics program. Where we see some disconnect is that you know even though you may have said discourse is an issue you see in classrooms, it's not likely that the teacher that you may be trying to convince or trying to adopt that strategy or these routines they see them as a as that as a solution to a problem. They they have. So here are the here are the five stages of awareness. The first stage anyone is in when they're looking for a particular solution is is the first stage is is, is people are unaware. They're they're unaware that there is an even there is a problem at all. And so that's the unaware stage. So when you're thinking about it, is like you, you can imagine teachers right now is that you go in and ask them a question about like what are the pebbles in your shoe? And my teacher might say, like, I don't really have any. Like everything's running the way they they have they would like. The the classroom is, is working well. You might not find you know, a teacher who does say that, I'm sure that there are many problems that teachers are going to say. But when you think about, say, discourse or the solution that you want to provide is they might not, they, they, they're unaware that there's a problem in that area. They don't think that that's the problem. They're in, in the unaware stage. And when we think about providing professional development around, say, this zone and, and, and supporting teachers to adopt strategies, we're trying to maybe solve the problem that they're on. And, they're, and when they're in the unaware stage, this is where teachers are tuning out, or this is where teachers are like, this is not something that solves my immediate problems. They have different problems, and you may have not presented this strategy or adoption or routine as a solution to a problem they have, which is a major concern, a major problem of why you're not seeing adoption is because they're not seeing as the solution that you have as a solution to any of their current immediate needs or immediate problems. And what we have to do is if we do want to see adoption in that area because you know from research, you know from the learning you've done and the experience you've had with maybe your own students when you were in the classroom is that that is a problem and we do want to make sure, which means you have to make them problem aware, which is now stage two. You have to identify what that problem is and you have to help those teachers identify that the problem does exist. And when we help identify how a problem or what problem exists, they, there's there's different ways that we do this. One of the one of the ways that we try to do this here in in the work that we're doing is is I always think about the the book from Chip and Dan Heath, which is called Switch, which is about how to make change when change is hard. And in that book, they outline the elephant, the rider, and the pathway. And in order for change to happen, you have to convince the elephant, which is like your emotional side. You have to have like help that emotion kind of overcome this. Usually, this is identifying like barriers, fears, and uh, concerns. And this is usually where our problems. come 
come from? And then what we have to do is convince the rider. This is the logical side of your brain. Like convince the rider that this makes sense. A lot of times when we're trying to make it, you know, have adoption, if we are trying to convince teachers that they need to be problem aware or be in the problem aware stage is we're trying to help them recognize that there's a problem and where we're falling short is a lot of times in math, we try to help them with the data. You know, the here's, here's their logical reasons that this is a problem in your classroom. Maybe the scores aren't so high, or maybe there's, there's some sort of logic reason here, but maybe where we're falling short on helping teachers become problem aware is that we haven't addressed the elephant, which is like, you know, the elephant has to go down this pathway in order. If an elephant doesn't want to go down that pathway at the end of the pathway is change. But if the elephant doesn't want to go down that pathway, it doesn't go down the pathway, which means why we have to convince elephants, our emotional side, our fears, our pebbles in our shoes. We have to address those when we're trying to help teachers become problem aware, which means you have to, if you want to position discourse as a solution or, or these routines or, or these ideas to, to adopt in the classroom, we have to position that there is a problem and what that problem happens to be. And we have to help teachers make, uh, make that emotional uh, reaction to that problem. We have to make that connection. A lot of times that's us learning about our teachers and, and less learning about what, what pebbles they have in their shoe. And that's why we use that phrase pebble in our shoe is we want to bring those problems out and then help identify that there are problems. And then when you're, when you identify that you have problems or a problem that you would like to solve, the next phase is to be solution aware. Because what happens is if you're in the problem aware stage, a problem aware stage is like, I understand I have a problem I, I'd like to solve. A lot of teachers live in this land. I have lots of issues that we would like solving. But if we're not in the solution aware stage, we just think problems exist and we don't know that solutions exist or we don't know yet what solutions are out there for us. And that's why we have to, this is where our PD usually lives is if, if we do identify correctly what a problem is for our teacher, we then help shift them into that solution aware, which means the educators know a solution exists, but then they're also not sure that the solution is right for them. So they might be living in solution aware, which means you've helped them identify, yes, they've made the connection. This is an actual problem for me. Discourse is an actual, like having discourse in my classroom is an actual problem. I don't have it and I, and I need to get it. I've recognized that, which is a huge accomplishment if you can make that happen. But then they're also going like, but I don't know what's the right solution. Like, I don't know where, where those solutions are. And this is where we live usually in professional development. And this is where we've made mistakes is that we jump right to solution aware. We're like, here's the solution to your problem. This is what it looks like, but we haven't made them problem aware. And they came from the unaware stage. So when we are in the solution aware, this is where it makes sense. If you can get a teacher to this part where like identify this as a problem and now I'm looking, actively looking for solutions to that problem, this is where your your strategies, your ideas, your your routines, the modeling of it's going to make sense to them. This is where you're seeing teachers nod their heads because they're living in solution aware land. So we want to make sure we can get teachers to this solution aware straight stage. Now the fourth stage, the fourth stage is strategy aware, which is educators know about the target strategy you're working with, but maybe they're not convinced it's going to work yet for their students. Like they're in solution aware. If they were in solution aware, they're going, okay, I see the solution you're providing me. I see another solution. I'm not sure which one it is. But then if they're in strategy aware, they're like, okay, I, I see this particular strategy, but I'm not yet convinced it's for me. And so this, this is the idea where we need to, to help our teachers like see it in action, but also they need to like play and grapple with this. This is where the follow-up, the, the, the implementation that they're trying, like, I'm going to try this, but I'm, I'm not fully set that this is something that I'm going to like make sure I implement it. They're, they're on the fence in a way. We need to kind of help them get over that fence by helping their elephant get over the fence, but also helping the rider get over the fence. And this is where the third stage for me comes in from the book Switch, which is the pathway. So the, the elephant has to go down the pathway. The rider has to go down the pathway, but the pathway has to be clear. And we want to clear that pathway for the educators who are moving down that pathway. So if we've convinced the elephant, their emotional side, we've convinced their logical side, which is the rider, everybody's pointing in the right direction. We have to help make it easy to get down. This is where resources come in. You know, this is, this is, this is how you get teachers over the strategy aware stage and into the most aware stage, which is the fifth stage. And this is also before implementation. We're just being aware of what we need to do. So the fifth stage, most aware is educators recognize the strategy's potential effectiveness, but they're still trying to implement it. They haven't like convinced themselves this is going to work on a regular basis, but there are the 
at the edge of that implementation stage where they're like, yep, I'm going to go forth and I'm going to give this a shot. And this is where we need to provide that follow up. This is where we need that teacher to be like, I'm going to try this and I'm going to get reinforcement from you or from a coach or from we're going to touch back in later at a system wide professional development or we're going to have some sort of peer happening so that the follow up can help maintain the consistency, maintain the adoption of this particular strategy. So we want to move, we want to think about where are teachers on these five stages? Are they at the unaware stage? Like they don't see the problem that you're trying to actually solve. Um, We want to help them identify those problems. And a lot of times you have to help them identify that problem, like their problem, and then and then make the connection that the solution you want to provide in that solution aware stage actually solves the problem that they have, which is a hard thing to do. But we have to learn about what the problems, the pebbles that our teachers are having, and then and then make those connections. So five stages are the unaware stage. Educators aren't aware of the problem exists. Problem aware stage. Educators identify that their problems uh, identify that they have a problem, but they're unaware what that solution is or what it looks like. The solution aware stage is like, we know we have problems or we know we have this problem. We also know that solutions are out there, but we're not sure which one's the right solution or, or how to use those solutions. Strategy aware, which is in between the, the, the ends here, is educators know what, the, what strategy you're trying to work on. They know that there's a solution and it's a good solution, but they're not convinced yet it's going to work for them. And then the, at the most aware is they're ready to implement. They've been convinced. They're, they know there's a problem. They know this is a solution to the problem. They have a feeling that's going to work for their students, but they're not sure yet. They're, they're still ready to implement it. They're going to take that step. So this all has to happen, right? Like all you have to identify where teachers are on these five stages before the implementation actually happens. And when we're providing professional development, we just usually focus on the solution aware. We're like, let's just give you the solution, even though it might not be a a solution to the problem you have, and then we're gonna ask you to implement it. And we haven't really helped them through all five stages. And when you go into professional development sessions or you go into your coaching, try to think about where that teacher is on on these five stages. And these five stages change for every strategy that you're trying to help implement in those classrooms. So this is why you wanna stick to some strategies and not too many strategies, because when we have too many strategies, you have to think, teachers have to go through these five stages for each one, sticking to a few or maybe one this year you're focusing on. Help your teacher, identify where your teacher is on the stages of awareness for professional development, and then coach them through these five stages. If you only have system-wide PD days, right? If you only see them once, twice a year, then when you're planning that day, Don't assume that they're in the solution aware stage. Help them identify the problem, make the connection, convince the elephant, and then they'll be more likely to take that adoption as long as you've built in as well when they're ready to implement after the most aware stage that they have some sort of accountability or follow-up. So five stages of awareness for mathematics professional development. Take this, put it into into your work plans. Make it part of the math improvement plans you're working on every day. How How does this help you get to your objectives and your key results this year, right? You have key results. You know exactly what you're working on this year and you know how you're going to make that impact because you've set up some, you've set up measurement techniques throughout the year so that you know by the end of the year, you're going to hit these particular goals in these ways. This stages of awareness is going to help you identify where teachers are so that you can help them better.